what's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday. It is time for this week's episode of Recap. I am Benjamin. YouTube channel. So be sure to click. Like, you know what to do. Um, lovely to see all of you here today. Saw most of you this morning for bench warmers, but uh, you know, we got to finish the show off or finish the day off with the, the recap show. I froze. That's fantastic. All right, let me do it again. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday. Time for this week's episode of Bench Warmers. Fuck! You're in my head now. You're in my head. <laughs> One more time. One more time. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday. Welcome to this week's episode of Recap. I am Benjamin. Thank you for joining us. Lovely to see you all in here in the chat. Saw most of you this morning for bench warmer. So good to end the day with you guys. Um, as a reminder, if you're not able to catch the show live, we are adding every episode of bench warmers, flip the script and recap to YouTube. So go to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, give us a like, and everything will be peaches and cream from that point out. There we go. I nailed it. Anyway. Uh, great show today. We're going to be talking about Phoenix Lights, which I know is going to be Austin's new pet project because he's all about the alien business. Uh, we got another special surprise dropping tomorrow for all you Texas Rangers fans specifically. Uh, variety packs to show off. Another collection dropping this Tuesday, April 2nd. A little bit of a mini collection. And then, uh, you know, hey, it's March Madness, so we're going to be doing some basketball discussion. So anyway, guys, what's going on? Let's bring in the ever punctual, the ever immaculately dressed to Furry Taylor. What's going on, chat? What's going on, what everybody? Up? <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey, man. What's up, Ben? You're better than me right now because I fucked up that entire intro. So. <laughs> no, you are good, man. <laughs> Listen, like chat said, aliens are real. They they went ahead and hit your Wi-Fi real quick. They, they don't want us to. They don't want us to spread the news of what's going on. <laughs> I'm gonna bl I'm gonna blame it on me waking up while it was still dark out. I had to do an interview with a uh, TV station in North Dakota this morning, so mm -hmm. like very little sleep. Just got back from LA after the last couple of days watching basketball, so I'm I'm trying to get myself up to speed. Speed. So listen, man, it's all good. We're we're here. It's recap. You know, two headed two headed machine here, but of course we we can't forget about the thr uh, the trifecta here. That's right. We got to bring in the Hydra. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> Austin LaBeouf. Hell yeah. What's up, boys? Ben, that was a rough one. That was so bad. <laughs> like, well, no. I mean, when you said I got cut off, like, I, it sounded great on the first run, and then I just got in my own head when I had to do it again, so. Yeah, you were stuck with, hey, it's Ben. Uh, <laughs> and then you came back. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Pretty so good. Pretty bad. good opening. Solid. Definitely, uh. Is definitely gonna be how the show goes. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we're I gonna like get it. into it tonight, chat. We're gonna get into it. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. We're, how's everybody doing in chat? Do aliens like cats? Have you seen our Instagram posts recently? Of course, they like cats. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah, they love hats. They love music, and they love being recorded. Hell yeah, <laughs> and More photographed. Enough. Yeah, <laughs> who knew? Who knew it only took a hat campaign for the aliens to show themselves? Exactly. You know? It's, it's almost hey, like big, we knew this the whole time. Big show. It, we haven't even hit April yet. Don't worry. There's some Phillies hats coming. I promise you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of heat coming in April and May. 1,000%. Can't wait. I was not dressed as the <laughs> <laughs> Well, so uh, Ben is now, I was just going to say, Ben's admitting to being part of the the whole conspiracy theory behind aliens, but he was frozen that whole time uh, when he was. I said it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so I like what uh, MV Panda said that they actually brought the the hats from their home planet. I like I that. like that theory. Mm. I like that theory. Who knew I have my own in... theories. Yeah, we might know. get into in a little bit. We're getting close to fifty nine fifty days, so maybe they said, "Hey, let's drop some stuff off and get back to the <laughs> Maybe, or maybe they never maybe. left. That's Davy's theory. Mm -hmm. I'm actually yeah. really excited for 59, 50 days this year. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Ben, how was LA? 
It was good. Uh, besides the Pacers getting boned against the Lakers, um, it was great. A lot of <laughs> basketball within a four-day time period. So yeah, it was. Go, and then three games in L.A., hit the store yesterday, got back home last night. So, yeah. Hell yeah. And my wife's in the chat. So much basketball. Wow. <laughs> Angie. Angie's a trooper, let me tell you. Oh, she man. is. And it's her yeah. birthday next week, so. Oh, boy, Ben. Oh, yeah. Well, happy early birthday, Angie. Um, <laughs> the recap <laughs> crew. Appreciate you for hanging out with us and, and letting us borrow Ben, you know, on Wednesdays for, you know, an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. And Ben dragged Angie to the store, too. So, yeah. I'm here. He's all over for Hat Club this this past weekend. Love it. We appreciate you, Angie. And thanks, thank you for putting up with Ben full time. Love you, babe. <laughs> 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 yeah 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 get trolled son yeah that this indians is still sitting on the site and that's a perfect segue because austin Ooh. you're taking us through uh site sleepers right yeah let's go, over, let's go over some slight sleepers yeah i'm already ready to start freezing up on the screen <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sharing my screen ben so hopefully it'll it'll do well for you Oh, that Astro right too. there that you have your, your mouse over, Austin, is very interesting. Yeah, only two sizes left in the Ransom Note Astros. Okay. Um, I don't know the, the I don't know the backstory behind this. So Austin, I figure you will actually give more insight as far as like where this script style came from and et cetera, et cetera. So it was the funny enough thing is it was originally offered in a new era program open to retailers hmm. and uh that was something that i don't think was received well at the time but ronnie fitteds uh did a pack with burdines i believe it was yeah. that he did this no. uh ransom note uh type of application to it uh and it took off there uh, i think freddie put this one together um so, and, uh, so yeah, I think it's been executed now by a few different stores. People are digging it. Not my cup of tea, if I'm being honest, but, <laughs> but you know, it's each their own. Uh, so like it's, it sold incredibly well for us. So, yeah, so, uh, I'm excited for that. This might mean some more opportunities with mm. some, uh, different applications for, for like team marks outside of the way that we typically see them. Um, so like, you know, like that we classic scripts that we get to do and we did get to colorize those, but does this lead to more, more options that MLB is open to? Like, uh, if they were okay with this, like, I don't know why they wouldn't be okay with some other things that we, that we want to do. True. Sure. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. This, rem this whole front script, um, logo kind of reminds me of, um, for the Travis Scott heads in chat um, reminds me of um, birds in a trap sing Brian McKnight. Every time I see that logo, I just, I think of that album or uh, days before rodeo because of the, Ooh. I think it's because of the S like, um, and just also cause it's against like, that's a Navy or is that a black? It's a Navy um, crown. Navy. Oh, okay. Olive top visor mm -hmm. and green under visor, black sweatband only available mm -hmm. in two sizes. So if you're digging it, I would suggest going to scoop it. 738 um, is my size. Might have to go grab that. Yeah, and all of these logos, I believe, are like – I mean, that looks like the Texas T. Yep. That yes, looks yeah. like the Angels A. Yep. Mm. The S on the far right is the old San Diego Padres from like – Oh, Ben's frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Roy, the R, I believe, is from a royal script. How much of what I said got cut out there? Uh, uh, San Diego Padres, and then that's 19, 1948 Pacific Coast League, so before they got to the major leagues, that was their old logo. Interesting. No idea yeah. where the O's is from. Is that from the Orioles? It looks like it, but... Hmm. Oh, boy, Ben. You might want to jump out and then jump back in. Yeah. Yeah, it's like every it's like every like 15 seconds. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I would jump out and then jump back in. All right. I'll see you guys in a sec. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. The 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 S is throwing me off. I don't know. 
The only thing I can think is Seattle Pilots, maybe. Yeah, I was um, kind of getting that because. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Chat yeah. might know better, actually. Yeah. So, but, but like yeah, that. that that dropped uh, earlier today. We mm-hmm. had a pink martini sneakily hit the site. Uh, mm-hmm. San Diego Padres. So Ben was just talking about San Diego there. So we have the San Diego Padres sold out in a couple size, pretty good size run left. Um, you know, classic olive crowns, solid tone, uh, pink bottom, tonal flag. You know, the I have the Marlins pink martini, and I have mm-hmm. Dodgers. I want to say, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ben. Welcome back. Hey, but do you have a Yankees one? <laughs> I do not have the Yankees one. No. Hell no. So, uh, next up, we have an Arizona Diamondbacks inaugural patch. That's cooked That's cooked in a lot of sizes. This is a very nice looking hat. I love this uh, shade of green that we utilized here. Yeah, it's definitely a different green than we normally used to seeing. Or normally it's like a two-tone. So. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, like, or it's a different color green if we do a two-tone. So I like that. It's clean. Hell yeah. And and so I see uh, G. Laurent in chat saying, bring back pink martinis again. Um, so they're like, we took everybody's feedback in Discord and provided that to um, to the design team. I don't know how they plan on bringing some of those back. Um, if they're going to mm-hmm. bring them back in full collections or you just might sporadically see them on the site. Uh, wink, mm-hmm. wink uh for uh for something that ben might show off in a little bit um but i think uh at least for the time being that's how you're gonna see those kind of just how we just saw the pink martini just randomly get added so i don't know the rhyme or reason behind the team that they add Mm -hmm. um but we gave everybody their feedback as to um which collections everybody wanted to see the most of so i like this cleveland hat a lot yeah it's a very nice hat uh i think it would have done better in uh more towards the fall yeah i agree with that part so yeah just being an all solid uh brown crown um gray uv really nice looking hat though like i'm digging the uh the light blue metallic stitching around the around the cleveland script jacobs Mm -hmm. field side patch 10th anniversary of jacobs field oh yeah i do like that i i agree with you on cap i agree with you on that cap crusader i think that one would have looked good as an icy just because of the the metallic Ooh, that would have that would have been really nice. Yeah, I agree with that. Would have been sexy. <clears throat> we have a Texas final season patch hat here. Mm. So two-tone, black crown, brown upper visor, all metallic threading across the front script. Uh that's a that's not a Kelly Green under visor. It, yeah, no. it looks a little bit darker than darker. it should. It's definitely yeah. darker, yeah. It says olive under visor here interesting Mm. yeah different i like it i like the coloring on the side patch especially yeah Yeah. i think that green actually does that green match the uv or is it's kind of close enough i don't think so i think it's brighter it's brighter okay yeah yeah i don't think so um yeah but it's a nice execution uh it feels intentional i don't know it kind of looks like uh the mexico hats that we've done uh, yeah, like in like we released in de- December. Um, yep. I don't know if that was the intent behind it was to make it make a Texas hat that fit there. Uh, and then <laughs> up next for Shauna, we have a San Francisco script. I know for a fact these ones dropped at Great Mall last week. I gave them I gave them the green light to go a little bit early on this one because it's a nice looking version. hat. It's a very mm-hmm. nice looking hat. I mean, it's team colorway. You can't really go wrong with that. But it nope. looks like it's got a copper um to it i feel like this one probably should have been a green under visor in my opinion um, uh, yeah. yeah yeah i, I think, think for yeah, offsetting I think colors the, i, I, w- the I would gray say so. then the gray hit again i think i would have liked it in a green oh um, uh, yeah i think and then especially with the copper you uh the copper surrounding the san francisco script yeah we, we couldn't yeah. have picked a better hat to show off the <laughs> 2010 side patch oh That's my god we chose. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 20 so 200 <laughs> 200 yeah world series 200 no yeah beautiful chicago white Sox with the 75th anniversary side patch i mm-hmm. hate myself for not buying this in la yesterday oh 
really? It's, I've said this multiple times. This is hands down my favorite White Sox front logo of all time. And the mm -hmm. fact that it was in my hand. It was in it's his in hands hand. and he didn't buy it, as I'm assuming what he's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> The Kaminsky side patch on this is phenomenal. Yeah, I think the I think the gold circular trim on the outside definitely. It's like that's the nice that's the cherry on top for that. I I like this. I didn't think I was gonna like metallic gold on Vegas gold, but this hat proved me wrong. It can actually work. Mm -hmm. It looks like way it. better in person. I'll just say that before I cut out again. <laughs> <laughs> Next paycheck, Ben. Uh, Dude. I went and tried to get it fixed, and they said I had the most powerful internet they had to offer. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it it just might be their shitty routers that they that yeah. they give out. Oh my god! So, and a new router, yeah, yeah. And they, those routers are made to break. Um, so uh, up next we have a atrocious team, uh, the New York <laughs> Yankees 50th anniversary <laughs> patch. Uh, this has a very specific theme to it, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I think there was an LA one that was also uh, like a yep. a cousin to it, if you will, maybe a brother sister mm -hmm. hat, you know. Um, so I think it uh, had a direct, maybe a twin. I don't know. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely a terrible team. Great colorway. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely giving me. It's weird because you what what direction would you think it would be going, Austin? Like because I feel like it could go a couple different directions. It could go like a like low key kind of an ox pack direction, but it could yeah. also go like a Black History. Yeah, it's it's definitely got a musical vibe to it. I see. When I looked at that because of the team, I didn't think musically originally. It may have just been because I saw Spike Lee on sneaker shopping not too long ago, so that's why I probably I saw like the red. The gold and the green, and I immediately thought maybe like Spike Lee potentially, but that's just where my mind I think was at the time. Very yeah, a lot of people, a lot of the people in the comments got this one correct. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. Uh, Cap Crusader. Uh, okay, up next we have a Seattle Mariners. Uh, no, mm. plain Jane on this one. No, yeah, I that. really like this. Like I actually really like is that ooh, is that like per, is that an iridescent drop shadow? Yeah, it's yep. a it's a like a lighter pink. Oh my god. Yep. Light pink. Wow. White yeah. gutter, gray under, beautiful execution. Not a damn thing wrong with it. This one gave me a lot of Freddy um Sakura vibes. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see that. Yeah. Up next, don't need to go into it in too much detail because it's sold out. It's gone. The official wild panda pin. Out of here. Cooked. Cooked. Absolutely cooked. So if you guys can't see, it's a it's a panda with a W for an eyebrow line for wild. Uh, and then it's biting a cactus. It's a pretty cool execution. Very good yeah. execution. Shouts out to Davy and Water. Yeah, shout out to, good yeah, job, shout out to Davey. Shout out to Davey. I carry on with the uh, 2021 coffee pack reference in regard to that. Whoa. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I forgot all about the coffee pack. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, up next, I won't ro roll through every single team here. We had another color story drop. Uh, this one was a Navy coral uh, yeah. collection. Um, so it's yeah. everyone has hints of metallic gold and coral side patches. Um some have the coral in the front logo as well, but it's got the coral UV to it. Definitely a summer hat, in my opinion. So summer's quickly approaching. Uh, mm -hmm. These will probably be available uh, for a little bit. So because we order a lot of units in our color stories. Um, so <clears throat> good, good hat to pick up when you uh, when you get a chance. What mm -hmm. size are left in the Baltimore? Or is it a full size run? I'm gonna be shocked if it yeah, I was gonna say I don't I was gonna be shocked if it doesn't have a full size run. Because I know yeah. that these have a lot of stock behind them. Mm. So, it's a beautiful execution, though. I'm digging it. I will say if if anybody's feeling like you know Ben every two seconds <laughs> and they're that that's probably but the best way.
He dropped again, bud. In hand, they're amazing. That's the best way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got out the in hand, they're amazing. And uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, a sneaky restock that we had was uh, the um, Black Dome Truckers. Those made a return, which I believe we did in 2022 or was it 2023? Mm-hmm. Can't remember. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. Wow, that's that was shocking to me. Uh, we're uh, pretty on last that. year. Last year. Okay, we're mm-hmm. pretty cooked on that. Uh, on that D back. It did well yep. the first time around. Not not a shock. To, uh, I guess not much of a shocker that they're doing well now. But yeah, good mix of teams. Um, mm-hmm. Good mix of logos. Yep. And just don't be bald while wearing these because uh, <laughs> you'll get a, you'll get a nice uh, sunspot on your head. Oh, um, some more variety packs, which I don't know if we want to go into. I'm really digging this Raiders. Yeah. That Raiders I, is clean. There, there's one I want to, oh, the, the Cardinals one, the script one. I, I definitely want to point that one out if we get a chance. Okay. I believe this might have a cord top visor. Yeah, I think yeah, it does. Black quarter or top visor on this one, and quarter. Yeah, I can button. tell you from the lighting right there. Which one you say, Ben? Uh, right above the Raiders one. It should be a St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, that, that one. One. Is, that one's tough. So this one was actually put together by Style. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, who helped with the uh, the hometown collection? Uh, what was that two years ago? Uh, him and Osprey. And uh, he's a big Cardinals fan, and he went very old school with the jersey design and especially the uh, 1967 alternate logo for the side patch. So I think it's I think he did an excellent job. And then, obviously, we only have three, four sizes left in that one. So everybody in the community definitely seems to like it as well. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. an off, he, uh, off-white, right, Ben? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's not optic. It's off-white. Yep. And then this is a very nice pinky that we have going on here with this uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> I believe that's a redrop, right, Austin? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I believe this used to be a NoHo exclusive. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So we brought it online, folks. Bada boom. It's been a while since we dropped it, though. I think it's been a good year at least. And then I'm sneakily liking this uh, this Dodgers hat a lot. Mm, yep. Two-tone, navy crown. Uh, red top visor, gray under, oh, green under, uh, white LA script, good white LA, uh, block lettering in 1988 World Series. There, not a great World Series as a Mets fan, but still, what 88? Yeah, well, of course, because you weren't in it. <laughs> <laughs> it was even worse for us A's fans because we have to deal with Kirk fucking Gibson every goddamn year when they talk about the World Series. Yes, sir. Uh, speak of the Mets, we have a 40th anniversary Apple front patch. Raise the Apple. I don't know how I'm feeling about this one. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one either. I feel like I, I would have just liked to. I, I said it to um, so Elk Dot. I don't know if Elk Dot is in chat, but Elk Dot posted he is. the um, posted the Yankees one that we did uh, fairly mm-hmm. recently with um, Jeter. Okay. With Jeter. Yeah. The Jeter patch. I'm really wanting a Mike Piazza. That would be nice. I think that would I think that would be the equivalent for y'all. Yeah. And that would, I think that I'm would be really good. wanting a Mike Piazza patch. Yeah, yeah. Elta was able to scoop up the uh Yeah, the Jeter pinky. That man's That's collection is impressive. That's all yeah. I gotta mm-hmm. say. Uh, And then we'll just kind of round it out here. So we have a Sidewinders hat. That's a very nice colorway with that olive and black uh, two-tone. Is that a corduroy upper too? Yes, that is. Yes, Mm -hmm. it is. Uh, um, I'm liking the execution as – I don't know if you can see here, but the execution on the uh, MILB logo is pretty nice. Looks like it's teal from, like, the front logo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And black. Yeah, really good hits um, hits the color on on that against that olive color. Mm-hmm. Another Giants for Shauna. And then we uh, restock some uh, some carriers. Sounds good. And for those in chat that were wondering about this Indians that I have on my head, this is actually still a full-size run on hatclub.com and on the app. You just have Get to it. go to – Yeah, you got to go to the um, – you have to go to Fitted Hats and then go to MLB, and then you'll be able to see it. 
So, yeah, that's the side. You know what we, no you know what we didn't mention in all this, but I know Mr. Walker fifty four did several times in the chat. All Major League Baseball and MLB Minor League Baseball buy one get one forty percent off all regular price. Yeah, that's a, that is a crazy sale that we're running right now. And Happy Opening Day, everybody! Friday, right? What's that? Yeah. Does it end Friday? Uh, it, it ends tomorrow. Oh, okay. So oh, tomorrow at midnight, just because opening if day. Maybe even chat, you would be able to confirm. So yeah, buy one get one forty percent off. That's an awesome deal. So do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. Or as Ben uh, as Ben closed out his North Dakota. Uh, uh interview this uh <laughs> this morning he goes he they go do you have any tips ben or, or anything to say and he goes support baseball <laughs> <laughs> dude she caught me off guard with that question i was like uh yeah baseball <laughs> go support <laughs> uh, it was epic it was epic so that's it for sight sleepers yay wow. yay so should we get into uh, should we get into Thursday? Oh, uh, we, we should definitely get into Thursday. Well, I think we should get into Thursday. I think it was meant to be with me being front and center on that. Well, I was going to say we have one other hat that's dropping tomorrow before we talk about your. Oh uh, yeah, show it off, Ben. Let me drag creation. you up here. So now, yeah, I was like, I'm going to go center screen. Now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who. I think it was uh, somebody. Oh, Big Show had mentioned he forgot that the Rangers are the defending World Series champions from last year. And uh, what better way to celebrate that than with the new 2024 Texas Rangers ring ceremony hat, mm. which, of course, is going to drop tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, hatclub.com, hat club app. Um, you may notice it's in my size because I bought this one because I collect all the World Series and all the ring ceremony hats. Correct. Yep. All the fine details there in fine metallic gold, including the new era flag, the front logo, and of course the side patch. And oh, what's that? Metallic gold sweatband. Wow. Yeah, the metallic gold sweatband is a different touch, but I'm digging it. Yeah. I was I was thinking they were gonna go black guts on that, but that metallic gold is actually a really nice touch. It's hot. Uh these are made in Bangladesh, and of course they are black under visors, so uh, I was trying to find my uh, my Red Sox one. I have that. That's the last uh, ring ceremony hat that I have is the Red Sox, and it fits <laughs> perfectly. Ah, Looks good, Benji. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there we go. That's what's yep. uh, that's what's kicking off tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Hackclub.com, Hack Club app, and I want to say maybe some stores are getting it, but I think for the most part, the majority of the stock will be online. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, now, Ben, is that uh, is that sweat or not the sweatband? The uh, interior taping gold too. It is black. Yep. I think that would have been a cool touch if they did interior taping as gold as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that. I don't. I don't hate the gold sweatband. I think that's the first time they're doing that, right? I believe the Astro or not Astro. No, I think the Astros did it the previous year, if I'm not mistaken. I forgot to grab it off the wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very clean. Very though. Nice. Yeah. That, that oh. gold against that was that like majestic blue or not not majestic blue. It's just the thing is regular royal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now it's your turn, Austin. All right. Chat. Thursday. We have an invasion. Hitting the streets <laughs> of Phoenix, Arizona. Also, just the skies, I should have said. The skies of <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix Lights, <laughs> folks, is dropping this Thursday. It's something that uh, I, I cooked up the concept when we were doing the Phoenix event. Uh, and then Freddie did the execution on the designs. I think he masterfully did it. Uh but we're going to go into some uh, some further details beyond just showing off these crowns to this hat as to these hats as well. So four styles releasing tomorrow on hatclub.com, the hat club app. Uh, first up, I'll show the one on my head so that way I can put it back on my head after we have the Los Angeles Dodgers. Doyers. Battle of L.A. Doyers. Battle of L.A. Metallic silver stitching on the front. Oh, that peanut butter brown top visor. 
which Benji loves. 50th yeah. anniversary side patch. Uh, you'll notice all the side patches uh, have a disc shape <coughs> to them. Intentionally done. Masterfully done by Freddie himself. Mm. Uh, I'm, peanut butter brown top button as well, if you care. Uh, and then the back, the back battermans are very well executed as well with metallic copper and metallic green and metallic silver. Black udders, green unders on all four, uh, and made in China. Hey. Made in China. Mm -hmm. chat. So uh, this one might be my favorite. Uh, okay. Up next, though, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if I didn't show off Arizona next. The place that inspired it all. So mm -hmm. um, those that don't know, we'll get into it in a little bit. Uh, but Phoenix Lights is inspired by a mass UFO sighting seen by thousands uh, in Phoenix, Arizona in March of 1997. Um, so very, very famous UFO sighting. Might be one of the largest ever. Um, uh, definitely in recent history. So the battle for L.A., or the Battle of L.A., that was a mass sighting that happened in 1942. Uh, so, you know, a lot of dead people now from that one. So, <laughs> so less talked about. Should be in the history books. Don't know why it's not. I think you should point out, probably due to natural causes, that all these dead people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, not, <laughs> not alien invasion. But that was a, that was a um, one that had a military response. So... Uh, if you do a little research on that one, Battle of Los Angeles had a military response. They actually, because it was not that far after Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. so it was uh, it was um, had a a very like active military response to it. Like they put up a bunch of jets and everything, and that was seen by thousands of people as well. But Phoenix Lights, the one that inspired it all, so peanut butter crown for all of this. So the, the, the story behind the black in the or the Browns in the, in the clay, uh, clay Brown, which I'll get into in the next app, um, is for black is for the night sky. And then peanut butter crown is for the, uh, Arizona mountain ranges. And then the, um, the clay is for like the dirt of, uh, of Arizona. So, hmm. um, yeah. So snakehead logo here. Ooh. Yep, with the 2001 World Series champion side patch with that metallic green. Actually, that specific side patch for the champions, I don't feel like we've used. No, I think that's the first time I've seen that side patch on a hat, period. I don't think I've seen that Was before. it Was it on the 2001 pack at all? I don't want to take credit for it if it, if it No, was. I don't think it no. was. Mm -mm. Okay, it was, well, I'll take credit for it then. Well, I'll let Freddie take credit for it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Copper... Copper snakehead, uh, glow in the dark, um, threading for the baseball and the eyes, uh, and then also nothing on that patch. So the side patch for this one is a glow in the dark feature, um, and then green under visor, black gutter, made in China, made in China, and very nice crown, very nice solid. I do so like that one as well. So. Glow in the dark features to this though, chat. Just so you know, I will actually. Should I shut off the lights and show everybody? I yes. say so. Yeah, because this is the one that does it the best. Yep, I am confirming right now in regard to the uh, Arizona hats. Uh, none of those had that side patch. Mm, yeah, I feel like I'm. I think that's the first time I've ever seen it. Oh wow, that's tough. This friggin' guy. <laughs> yeah you can kind of see it it's not fully blasted right now let's see if i can do it let me, <laughs> let me cook this for a little bit sub diego i never noticed that before and now can't see it what's that <laughs> what did uh, sub diego said wow i just had an epiphany austin looks like jake cronenworth yep he does who Jake Cronenworth. Uh, Jake Cronenworth plays for the Padres. Oh, that's very clean. I like that. There we go. Better representation there. All right. <laughs> uh, I'll have to Google the man. <laughs> I'll have to Google the man. Uh, I'll take it over the one that I usually get. 
Uh, the one that I usually get is uh, is Chet Hanks. No. E. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, okay. Um, so third up here is the uh, Seattle Mariners. Seattle Mariners. Wow. Uh, I don't know what Ben's thoughts are on this one because he's frozen. But I uh, I fully like this hat, and I expect Ben to as well. But black crown here, it is Best a different color in than the, the Los Angeles. So this one, the Los Angeles has the um, uh, the peanut butter crown or peanut butter top visor. Seattle mm-hmm. has that clay brown, that burnt orange, more burnt orange colorway than than anything. Very similar, a little bit darker than campfire. If you have a campfire hat. But yeah, metallic silver threading on the front, metallic green and metallic copper. Mm. Uh, 2001 All Star Game side patch, and again, disc shaped. Yeah, I also kind of like the fact that it's almost like a star, like in the in the sky. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, it's a really yeah. nice choice. Uh, this one is being dubbed the Space Needle, which I should <laughs> say. Uh, this one, Battle of uh, Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, this one is. Uh, Phoenix Lights, the official Phoenix Lights one. Uh, and yeah, and then the back baddie for this one is different um, than Los Angeles as well. So Los Angeles is the green mm-hmm. there, and then the Seattle is black and copper. Yeah, Gloran, I did notice that the Block S logo for that Seattle is like a little bit smaller than what we typically see it as, which I, I don't mind on this ad. It actually, I don't mind it either. Yeah, it looks yeah, I prefer it that way. We know how I feel about big logos. <laughs> it actually, it reminds me of the old, um, <clears throat> there was a collection New Era put together years ago in honor of Ken Griffey Jr. And they actually used that specific size S logo. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Uh, yeah, so those are the three that I have because I refused to pick up the other one. So Ben is, <laughs> ben is showing that one off. So go ahead, I've got ben. number four here. Uh, so peanut butter crown, button, and upper visor, metallic silver NY logo, and the 1998 World Series on-field side patch as opposed to the typical media guide version. So very <laughs> nice touch there. Very spherical in nature. Yeah. And then uh, I'm assuming this is the same uh, backstitch or sorry, flat stitch baddie on the back of the LA Dodgers. So you got the uh, metallic Kelly green, metallic silver, metallic copper. Um, As Austin said, all retro Kelly green under visor, black on the sweatband and made in China, just like the other three. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's perfect for like. Got some Tims with those. Yeah. That's all you need. That's all you need. Out of this world, man. <laughs> Out of this world. All right. Before I before I forget, before we hop into conspiracy corner, <laughs> let me show off this lovely t-shirt. Yes. That will be available tomorrow. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm super zoomed in. All right, let me back up. Let me back up. And let me get ready to show chat here. You guys are going to have to read chat's questions for me. Okay. okay. But we have this lovely Hat Club t-shirt dropping tomorrow. Well, that's fire. As well. I like that. Alien yeah. logo that we designed on the front. Getting poked by a cacti. Uh, $45. Available oh. up until size 2X. But we're going to give a history lesson here, chat. History mm. lesson. And then also get into my conspiracies about this collection as a whole. Oh, my God. Because I think there's some things that need to be discussed. Uh-oh. <laughs> Number one, no Mets. Let me zoom out. <laughs> no Mets. Let me zoom out here. There we go. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> no Mets. Equal Sucks. suspect. <laughs> immediately suspect about this and the alien connection to this collection with no Mets involved. Mm. We have the Hudson Valley UFO sighting with the, with the New York Yankees. Why isn't there Mets? You know? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Uh, yeah. 
So if you're unfamiliar with the Hudson Valley UFO sighting, famous in 1983 and 1986, both in the same location, a V-shaped UFO flew into the Hudson Valley region. <laughs> Up next, is Ben an alien? <laughs> No one that I know is obsessed with human clothing the way that Ben is. <laughs> 700 jerseys? Come on. That's very suspect. Uh, yeah? <laughs> is Ben an alien? Uh, let me know in chat. No. Chat, no. Let me know what the people are saying. <laughs> yeah. Big Show said, yep, Ben is, an, is the alien. Flash Fire says, totally. E even um, my wife is selling me down the river on this one. Yeah. <laughs> I Wow. She said, I think there's a chance. That's great. Even further, yeah. <laughs> Roswell, New Mexico. One of the most famous UFO crashes of all time. 1947. Canceled. 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 Las Vegas 51s, Jack. Uh, shows uh, the alien correlation. Canceled, Jack. <laughs> M-I-L-B. Are they men in black? <laughs> Even you know further is T eight hundred John Men in Black. Ooh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is a cybernetic John organism. With MILB, and that's where he got his Men in Black association. From what I've heard, Austin, anybody that's ever seen T eight hundred John doesn't remember ever seeing T-800 John. Like, when you no, ask them, hey, no, what did he look like? Or, yeah, they're like, what did you look, what does he look like? Like, what was the conversation? Everybody's just yep. like, ah, oh, you know, I can't really remember. I can't really recall. Oh, no, no, yep, see? Just, None in black. No. All right, up next, let's see. <laughs> I'll go this way. Yeah. Seattle, Space Needle. Mm -hmm. Why is it shaped like a UFO? And why is it called the Space Needle? Right? When it's mm. shaped like a UFO. It's mm. also the largest, Washington is the largest UFO sightings per capita in the United States. Back of the day. Aliens. Phoenix, oh, well, let's do Battle of Los Angeles next. So Battle of Los Angeles, read your history books, people. Not the stuff they give you in school. <laughs> the, the stuff that you need to find on your own. 1942, mass UFO sighting, had military presence there. Very, very famous. Probably the, mo the most famous mass sighting in the past 100 years. Phoenix Lights, Phoenix, Arizona, 1997, a March evening. Kurt Russell was on an airplane in Phoenix, Arizona, spotted the Phoenix Lights and mm -hmm. reported it. Mm -hmm. What does Kurt know? He later starred in a movie called <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 where he played an alien. What does he know? We need to find that out. <laughs> Kurt is our next guest. We got to yeah. interview him. I so, would die if we got Kurt Russell on the show. Conclusion <laughs> chat. <laughs> space space hippie vehemently says do not bring kurt russell into this confirmed ben is an alien from his I, I mean i will say i did i lived in the state of washington for three years that's another thing yeah and yeah in utah ben uh utah is famous for its ufo sightings you you seem to pop up where all the alien <laughs> happenings are happening Hey, it's more family related, really, than me just voluntarily going there. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, and Angie is actually confirming for chat. She she said she changed from I think this might be true to confirm. So do with that information, chat, what you will. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> Appreciate your efforts here. Uh, yeah. So the, this is the the wide web of UFO UFO conspiracy surrounding this collection. <laughs> I think it's no coincidence that these two specifically got canceled. What don't they want us to know, chat? What don't they want us to know? Shameful. Shameful. You know, listen, Austin, just, just when you go to sleep tonight, make sure Max is on full alert, the house alarm's on. 
Just, oh, he is the house alarm. No, yeah. he, <laughs> you better. I was gonna say you better like chain your leg to the bed or something like that in case uh, you know some funny business occurs. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot ah. happening right now. Davy, Davy hitting us with a Davy hitting us with an actual another question too. She said, "So did the aliens ever leave or just live in our ocean? Because we can't go very deep." What's your thoughts Ooh, on this? Question? All right. Well, you want to get into it about that too. So, <laughs> uh, there was a very recent finding. What well, this is going to be a problem? Hold on a second. Here. Very recent finding off the coast of San Diego. So one of the most famous UFO sightings as well, which is the famous uh, Tic Tac video uh, off of the Nimitz. Uh, this is going to be crooked probably the rest of the stream. Sorry, chat. <laughs> um, off of the Nimitz naval carrier. Mm. Let me fix this. This is going to bother me. All right. Uh, 2004, naval... Uh, <laughs> Naval car uh, carrier, the USS Nimitz. Famous UFO sh uh, <laughs> sighting there. Uh, Ben's going to dip out. His, his, uh, his Wi-Fi is crapping out. Mm -hmm. Famous UFO sighting there. Tic-tac-shaped UFO. White cylindrical tic-tac-shaped. Look it up. Mm -hmm. Has a lot of reputable sources behind that one. A lot of Navy officers involved. Navy pilots, etc. They chased it down. Thing went from zero feet to eighty thousand feet in the snap like of a that. finger. Yeah, explain that. Back. Aliens, bro. Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> explain that. Yeah. So, but to Davy's point, I do think that there is a, a definite ocean oceanic connection to the phenomena for sure. I believe that. Yeah, I do. Somebody, somebody actually asked a question earlier as far as like why most UFO sightings typically happen in the U.S. I don't feel like that's 100% true. There's like a lot of UFO no, 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 not at all. Not at all, yeah. chat. Not at all. Uh, probably the most well-spoken ones are, uh, are U.S. based. Like we just find out because like U.S. media is bigger than anybody else. But mm -hmm. Brazil is a hot spot. Uh a lot of Latin American countries are hotspots, actually, but Brazil being one of the big ones. <clears throat> Off the coast of Australia all the time, too. Very similar to um, uh, U.S. Um, one of the most famous ones is in Italy. Like, one of the most famous crashes, reported crashes, is in Italy. Uh, Russia, as well. Obviously, uh, Russia doesn't speak about it as much as the U.S. does. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So do a little, do a little research, do a little research. Yeah. We're not alone. <laughs> That's all you need. To <laughs> and neither will you guys with the Phoenix lights pack at all dropping when, it, um, when is this dropping again, Austin? This is dropping tomorrow chat, 11 AM Pacific, 2 PM Eastern hat club.com hat club app four styles, four mass sightings get abducted. Mm -hmm. So Davey <laughs> said, so what are your thoughts on Alaskan aliens? I, I'm going to say this. I feel like a, a state that experiences darkness for like almost half of the year, like it's just dark for like pretty much half of the year. Like that to me just seems like alien territory. Like it's just a like, spot. Yeah. It's like yeah. why? Like you can't see it. So it could be just, oh, that's just a whole bunch of lights in the sky, you know? Yeah. And uh, and then G. Laurent's comment too: All alien UFO sightings are always filmed by someone who's never used a phone before. Have you ever <laughs> tried? Have you ever tried to film something over a hundred feet away with your phone? Yeah, I mean, I feel like even even past that point, because uh, who said and it's it? in dark. Sp yeah, Space Hippie said all alien sightings are filmed from a potato. I, you know what's funny? Like, I feel like every single time I've ever seen like evidence of a ufo like you said it's always very grainy very out of focus but to austin's point it's like even your most powerful lens on your camera can't you know capture but so far till it starts to become pixelated so mm -hmm. part of it's just distance between you and whatever it is you're trying to record yeah. but also it's at night uh, I'm, I'm gonna throw a conspiracy theory your way austin i feel like you're gonna agree with this one 
phone cameras have improved significantly year by year by year by year. And I'm pretty sure it's because the corporations want us to find and discover life of aliens and alien crafts, <laughs> UFOs, etc. And so uh -huh. that's why they've been proving the cameras on every phone because it's quick out of the pocket. You're ready to go. Get your evidence. Well, there are some astro uh, photographers that like do um, photos like so like astrophotography, if you're not familiar, it's also just like something that like I do casually as well. Um, yeah. But like it's more just like pictures of galaxies and the, and the stars and things like that. But mm -hmm. some photographers now are literally attaching their phone to the to the big um, telescopes because you have oh. to attach your camera. You have to attach like your literal like DSLR camera uh, yeah. to the to the um, telescope telescope in order to take the uh, photography. So and then you have to do a long exposure because uh, and then you have to do it in burst and then you have to make that image into one like thousands of images into one because the Earth is constantly rotating. So um, but people are starting to do it with their phones now. That's how powerful phones are getting. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. You got yeah. a nice uh, lens attached to it. You might be able to spot a uh, an alien or two. Yeah, Cap Crusader. No, you know, I if I was an alien, I don't think I could really own up to it over <laughs> FCC airwaves. <laughs> but you know, I, I will say, uh, I have been called worse. <laughs> Definitely been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> I guess being a Braves fan means that I'm that I'm somewhat of an alien. But I'm happy now because our our team won in the last three to four years. So. Yeah, AT yeah. aliens. Yeah, yeah, aliens came and made it happen. I didn't think I was going to see it in my lifetime. So I feel like the most important question we got to ask you, Austin, is what year? If you can get it down to the month, that'll be even more impressive. Are we finally going to make first contact? Mm -hmm. I think we've already made first contact. You mean first public contact that like yes, yeah, first public contact. mass public uh, knows about? I think we're super far off from that. Like, because uh, like I think it's all it's all still um, too far out for a lot of people. I mean, look at how people handled COVID. Like, yeah, think people are going to. Do you handle... think it'll happen in our lifetime though? Uh, contact or disclosure? Uh, public contacts. A disclosure, yeah, sure. Why not? I think public disclosure is going to happen sooner rather than later because you have okay. a lot of military whistleblowers coming forward, uh, especially in front of congressional hearings, um, to like uh, provide their testimonies to Congress. Um, be but like because they're involved, like people have like lost their lives because of like uh, of like if they're like in military jets and and stuff like that. So. Um, so there's a lot that's been, uh, like covered up by the government from that perspective, but I don't think we're in our lifetime. We'll get, uh, uh, like open disclosure with like, here's what the aliens look like. Okay. Here's who they are. Here's where they come from. I think we'll just get the, in the near future, like the next few years, I think we'll get the official. We're not alone. We're researching it. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't think we'll have an independence day moment. Or just no. randomly, we'll just see like spaceships crest yeah. over the horizon. Keep Bill uh, Pullman alive. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, uh, but I do think that uh, I do. Th I do think there's been contact before because there's like uh, under congressional hearings, they they have said like there have been bodies discovered. Like a lot of these crafts have occupants uh, that have been part of crash retrieval programs and. In reverse engineering program. So I do think that there's a possibility that they probably have scooped a live one uh, yeah. before. Um, also, the universe is just too fucking massive for us to be it. Like, how Correct. stupid would that be if yeah. planet Earth is literally the only planet out of billions of planets that has intelligent life? So. Nice. <laughs> uh, you guys there ready you to move on to Friday? Let's yeah, do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Hold on one sec. Let me get up on screen. So uh, Friday is going to be a variety pack day. Uh, I'm going to run through most of these really quick because there's a few that in particular I know you guys want me to slow down on. So first up, Colorado Rocky script. This is going to be a burgundy in black two-tone, black button up top, uh, metallic green for the interior for the script, 1995 Coors Field side patch. So uh, flat stitch baddie on the back and the black and metallic copper. 
retro green, black sweatband, and this one is going to be made in China. Love it. I do. I love that. So these are going to be holding true right now too. What's that? I love that your internet's holding oh, true God, right I'm now too. Just incredible. On cloud nine right now. <laughs> um. So these are going to be dropping seven a.m. So very early early release on Friday. Uh, Tampa Bay Double Rays up next. So the 2001 TB logo, 10 season side patch. So a nice little uh, icy blue and metallic copper there. This mm -hmm. one is going to be an icy under visor. So dark green, black two tone, and a flat stitch baddie. Ooh. I like the baddie on the back. Ooh. I do like that. I'm I liking like it. Copper. Yeah. I like that copper with that blue. That's tough. Yeah. I'm also liking uh, Panda's comment too. Mm. Going Our back technology to jumping aliens were discovered around the 40s. Coincidence? I think I not. Think not. It's a good I call. I agree. Uh, going old school with the 19 teens Chicago Cubs bear ski. Uh, mm -hmm. Navy crown, black button, black upper visor. So this is a combination of off-white and a little bit of maroon as far as the separation lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we got the 1908 World Series Chicago Cubs logo for the side patch. Flat stitch baddie on the back. And a nice little um, cardinal for yeah. the, uh, the undervisor here. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. That's but like the same color. Is it, is it anywhere as close to Louis V uh, undervisor? Uh, no, th this is much darker. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because Louis V was like, Red, 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 crimson, yeah. red. Or is so that is that more like close to a brick red? Uh, no. I mean, I was gonna say it's showing up as a little bit more on the. Yeah, actually, no. I, I look at it again. It is kind of closer to brick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like. Vibe I know the Conda. lighting is making it look brick, but yeah, in hand, it yeah. actually is pretty dark. I like Vibe Conda's uh color description. He says a raspberry UV. Ooh. I, go, I go for that. I go. That's a good that. call. Yeah. Uh, this one is made in Laos. Hmm. Shouts out to Laos. So with Laos. Uh, next up, Baltimore Oreo script in metallic gold, but it's going to be a navy crown, uh, cardinal upper visor, cardinal button, and uh, 25th anniversary of Camden Yards for the side patch. Did I cut out there? No. no that, you're no, good. I'm okay. Just, I'm just making that face because that hat is clean. Yeah, Thanks, it's God. clean. I like it. Yeah. Uh, and this is going to be... So, like, metallic rust red is the outline around the metallic gold. Mm. Go back a little bit more. Uh, flat stitch batting on the back. So, a navy, metallic gold, and metallic red combination. Retro green, black on the sweatband. And this one is going to be made in Laos as well. 100% polyester. That's my favorite one that you've shown so far, Ben. Oh, just, just wait till we get to the last two. You're going to have a massive difference of opinion. <laughs> uh, San Diego Padres up next. So this is going to be uh, Vegas gold for the crown, metallic gold for the SD logo. Uh, mm. nine, or Sorry, 2016 All-Star game for the side patch. So a little bit of a dark brown for the upper visor here. I like it. Uh, Very similar to that Chicago that you wanted to yeah. pick up. Yeah, Talk about that, I yeah. mean, I I feel like we like there's a lot because there was a Yankees one and there's been some other teams, but they mm -hmm. keep for the most part like team colorway for the upper visor, the button. Uh, but obviously, it's going to be the Vegas gold, the metallic gold for the front logo for all of those. Uh, brown and metallic gold for the flat stitch baddie on the back. Cool gray, black on the sweatband, and uh, this one also going to be made in Laos. It's clean. Okay. I like the fact that we stuck tonal on both the S and the D for the for the front logo instead of like trying to alternate the color like we did on the pink martini. Oh yeah. All right, saving the best three for last. Uh, I've had a lot of people asking me, "Hey Ben, when is this hat dropping?" Well, it's dropping on Friday at 7 a.m. in the morning. This mm. is the Light Navy in black two-tone Texas Rangers with the metallic royal blue T logo. It's a beauty. Metallic silver on the interior of the blocking outline. Uh, 2024 All-Star Game side patch in metallic silver and metallic royal blue. <laughs> Flat stitch but rounded off Batterman logo on the back in metallic royal blue and metallic silver. Uh, cool gray under visor, black on the sweatband. And this one is going to be made in China. Hell yeah. This reminds me, what is the color of that bill, um, Ben? This one, it's black. black. Yeah, it's hmm. black, right? 
Yeah. I feel like this yeah. is as close. There's there's a team that people have been clamoring for him and asking about. Mm-hmm. I, feel like, I feel like this yes, might sir. be the, that, that <laughs> might be that might be the closest that you might get to that. I, yeah. If I was a person from that fan base, I would definitely secure this crown. And yes, yes. 7 a.m. Pacific time, never Eastern time. So don't worry. Boom. Lift the chart. Right. You get the tough. You, you ready? The, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. You see what I have on. So I have an idea. I do see what you have on. Yeah. Um, this one's going to fly. I already know it. So if you guys were lucky enough to experience the Atlanta pop up that we did at Good Times this last year, uh, now you get a crack on your own to experience the 2.0 version of the Atlanta Braves Olympic hat. Yep. Yep. Freddie is officially invited to all Atlanta cookouts from now on. <laughs> because what he's been cooking up, man, between both of these, like, I, I don't it- want to see your thunder, Ben, but I feel like the hat in itself, like, you have to understand, like, how difficult that is to get those stars on a hat. Like, yep. that's insane to be able to do that. And that's, like, really on brand for... Atlanta and the Olympics. So for me as a native AT alien, that's that is coming home. Is Whatever it, it takes. an off white or is it a it's an off white? It's actually okay. closer to a cream colorway. That's why I had to like turn down my light a little bit. Yeah, I was looking very out. optic at yeah. first. Yeah. But yeah. it's definitely more on the it's more like a pearl. Uh cream is always a bad word I, yeah. I I don't like to use, but it's just like, yeah, pearl is definitely uh all metallics for the flat stitch batty on the back. Uh Frosty Prem, Hat Club Original Pink Undervisor, black on the sweatband, and it is made in Laos. Sorry for anybody who thought it was going to be China. Listen, I, I, <laughs> I don't doubt care. anybody has a Laos hat in their collection from Hat Club. So if yeah. they have a problem with it, they can kick rocks. So, Edgar, I'm going <laughs> to tell you why I slightly disagree with you. So when this Hatlanta hat came out, a lot of native – AT aliens just because of the color because it's green. We wanted the 96 patch on there because obviously the Olympics happened in Atlanta in 96. So I felt like the fact that Freddie did this hat, which was the Atlanta exclusive, and now he doubled back and did this one where it's actually a 96 side patch. If you have both, that's like a real that's a nice pairing because you you literally have like I think both sides of the coin. So and if you yeah, guys didn't know like a perfect combo. The stars are three dimensional. They do pop out. They're not flat stitch. So very nice touches there. Yep. Seems like a perfect combo. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, Freddie crushed it, especially with what uh, what did Flash call it with the moist cream? The moist, <laughs> moist cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got. I Flash, you're gonna have to explain that color description to me. <laughs> Got <laughs> off, the off moist line. cream crown. We gotta say that every time. Every the time we use cream. that colorway, we gotta call it the moist cream the crown. Moist cream. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys ready for the last one? Yeah, yeah. ready for the last one. Oh, I'm ready. Sure. There she is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Emerald Bay, baby. Block S 1989 All-Star game for the side patch. That beautiful dark teal under visor, white sweatband, black and teal, flat stitch batty on the back. Uh, and it is made in Laos. Hold on a second yeah, here, that's... Let me uh let me do a let me do a little something something here. Let's see if we can hear it. Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I feel like I feel like of all the the three Emerald Braves that we brought back, I know everybody's been waiting on this one. I like the Compass logo. I did also like the S with the Compass, but this one to me, I think just it takes the cake. This one feels the most OG. Yeah, definitely. I will definitely be copying. (laughs) Yeah, I will definitely be copying. I might also cop the other Seattle one um, because I do like them both. Uh, but this one feels this one's a must. The other one is a uh, if my funds are appropriate. <laughs> so. Yeah. So um, so funny thing, chat y'all are because I hear some people hating on Laos. This hat is actually made in Laos. It 
fits very comfortably. Shape is really good on when the hat's on your head. So I don't know. I'm I'm starting to really I'm starting to like Laos hats. <laughs> uh, what's what's more real, uh, aliens or the placebo effect between Bang China and Laos? Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. I when I was in LA yesterday, I ended up buying the uh, the Oxpack Dodgers that we just re released. That one's made in Laos. Fits perfectly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Laos hats probably next to China hats fit the like the truest of size. So if you are actually a seven three eighth or a one fourth, those type fit pretty close to size. With Bangladesh, sometimes there's a little bit of room. Dude, it's always all over the board. Like I mean, like I get a China hat fit, fits like shit sometimes. Sometimes it fits perfect. Like it's yeah, the, uh, yeah. it's with a when a hat has twenty two processes in order to develop it. It's not it's not going to be the same every time. So. Yeah, it just it is what it is. So yeah. Hey, Elk Dot, I got you, brother. I got you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. Between now and then, uh, or between now and April second, so that's going to be Tuesday. Uh, we have a lot of A frame nine forties coming in, so just keep your eyes and ears open on the website and in stores for those. Um. Last thing we got a little bit of a three pack for Tuesday. Uh, these are going to be dropping 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, like I said, on Tuesday, hackclub.com, Hack Club app, very limited run, but uh, just a two-tone brown and camouflage. Uh, these are made of cotton, so just so you guys are aware, uh, 50th anniversary for the Houston Astros here. Flat stitch baddie on the back, cool gray undervisor, black on the sweatband, uh, made in Bangladesh on these guys, so there's number one. Ben, is it like a similar cotton to like a uh, Monaco? No, because that was a mm. uh, cotton canvas. This is just like straight cotton. Okay. Dope. Yeah. Dope. <laughs> uh, number two is going to be the Arizona Diamondbacks. So the more modern version of the D logo. So one that you don't see very often anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, 20th anniversary of the organization's existence. So 1998 through 2019. Same thing. Brown and camouflage two-tone. Very cool. Great under visor, black on the sweatband, and made in Bangladesh as well. Ben is wearing a snake's hat. You're right. I am. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, San Diego Padres. So uh, late 80s style typeface across the front. 25th anniversary of the organization. So 1969 to 1993. And same thing again. Brown camouflage, made of cotton, 100% cotton that is. Flat stitch baddie, cool gray undervisor, black on the sweatband, made oh, in Bangladesh. Club tag on the inside. What up? Hat club tag on the inside. Oh shit! Yeah, you're right. Sorry. If I, oh, I remember these. Okay, so yeah. these were supposed to be, uh, um, like inspired by military issued garments. Mm, okay, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there you go. It's just these three that are going to be dropping Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, hackclub.com, hackclub app. And uh, that's a wrap for March. Yeah. Hell March yeah. has been a crazy month, man. I mean, guys, I mean, I know we were going to, you know, roll into another question, but just in general, what were your favorite collections of the month? Like, like collections that instead of just like, because I know we could pick variety packs all day, but if you would say collections for month of March, what would be your favorites? Give me one sec. I got to go back to the list again just to make sure these actually dropped in March. Uh, I had a very biased uh, app exclusive that dropped in March that I was partial to. So, of course you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, That's that would be my favorite. Um, what else did I I'm trying to think from? NCAA obviously is going to be my number one. Uh, absolutely loved the yeah. work that was done on those. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the NCAA from a, a collection perspective, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, third in line. I forgot that too, Master Oh, Pack no, World and then World. Wild Panda. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah, Wild Panda was incredible. Like, I, I wear that. I wear my Panda Phillies hat. Like, it's been on my head every week for the past three weeks. So um, Maybe us, us common folk need that. <laughs> Need that panda. We need that, <laughs> that Phillies ASAP. Uh, and then I would say, uh, was Gold Rush this month? I did like Gold. It Rush. was this month. Yeah, yeah, it was this month. Yeah, Gold Rush was this month. 
Oh, and then one that I'm going to pick up eventually. Uh, I haven't picked it up yet, but I do want to pick it up eventually. I didn't pick it up because these have so many similar colorways to it, but mm -hmm. Southwest. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Southwest. I love the uh, execution that Freddie did on the, uh, on the sweatband for that. Um, so yeah. I think it was Vibe Conda that said uh, VHS, which I actually really agree with. I, I really like the way those looked in hand. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Homeland Collection, which was obviously only available in uh, Arizona, Arizona for uh, that one Sunday drop and completely sold out. So, uh, And, yeah, the entire Coyotes Collection for me was dope as hell. Too. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I, I wish we, I could wish we could have sold those outside of the event for you guys, but I wish as well. Reasons yeah. we could not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't even allowed to cop via an inv invoice. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I definitely got to say, yeah, the the Elite Eight pack for me definitely is in the in that conversation. Definitely got a wap pen is in there. Um, you know, obviously got to give love to my guy John for his drop in NoHo. Um, that was definitely among my favorites. Yep. Uh, I mean, I also feel like, well, yours, well, did Master Pack drop this month, Austin? Or was it just the Apex? No, the, just uh, Chicago did. Uh, okay, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, the others dropped at the end of February. Yeah, and then um, I like Gold Rush, too. That that Houston Astros, to me, was, was, really, was really dope. They had a lot of cool... Things in there. I know a lot of people weren't a big fan of the um, what do you call it, the sneaky two tones that we did, but I felt like that was really well executed too. Um, and then two thousand one packy. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I think some. I think one of the chat said it. It was a W March for Hat Club, and I yeah, thousand percent agree. And <clears throat> and then uh, Peyton brought up something too, which uh, I need to check into because I have a sneaky suspicion that your order is going to get canceled. Like there's been some master pack stuff that's popped up on the, on the website. Mm. I have a sneaky suspicion. It's like what has been happening. Like that happened with lightning pack uh, a few months ago, even though mm -hmm. lightning pack released last June. Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah. And like, it is just like some random error where like a random hat is going up in one size. So I'm hoping what I'm hoping happened is that it was an undeliverable attempt that yeah. came back, yeah, uh, and then they threw that up on the site to go uh, to get copped. That's what I'm hoping happened, but uh, like we didn't restock anything, so it's not like we had a replenished inventory. Um, so if you, uh, I would just be hesitant. Like, don't get your hopes up on that, because uh, yeah, JM sixteen twenty hit me up today because he hit on the uh, on the V backs. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, which I was like, I, dude, I don't know if this is real or not. I hope it is for for you. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, yeah, and uh, and I think it was a Scotty with the sneaks that I need that Seattle tip. This is a this is an older gem. I, I've been brim switching throughout the show. I I saved this one for last for a reason. Um, <laughs> shouts out to the community for getting me right with this one. I love that. Um, I needed it. Oh yeah. Um, but of course, with the end of March, we're ushering in April. Mm -hmm. And uh, big news, of course, is before we started the show, we announced we're going back to Houston. H-Town. Hell yeah. Two weekends. We Two weekends in Houston. My God. Two? Oh, man. Ugh. Two weekends? Jeez. Um, yeah, I got to I gotta zoom in a lot of the details that are going on here in regard to the, uh, the poster mm -hmm. that was put together. Not um, high TTV, no. Phenomenal work. Just, yeah, I really like this. Is this going to be on a shirt, Ben? I, I hope so. Yeah, I, even if it's not on a shirt, I need a print of that. Like I like like how we well, did. You might that. be able to cop both. Ooh. Uh yeah. So there might be a shirt available. There might be a, a poster available. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. <laughs> ben got so excited, his internet stopped. Working. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, it stopped if, working. If they do, yeah, a print of yeah, you went, oh, -ho! yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, that no, I definitely think that the um, I definitely think that that I need that print of that, like, of that, yeah, graphic it's pretty right dope. There. It's pretty dope. I think everybody's going to be very happy with the thematics behind it. We tried doing something uh, a little different that, um, uh, that people might not be, uh, 
familiar with or used to. Um, mm. So we have a good mix of variety styles, a good mix of core styles that are coming to there. Yep. Um, we have Agua Fresca, which is going to re- actually release online first. Um, so like that, I don't know if they're planning on bringing any inventory to Houston for that. I think they're going to see if it sells out online and then kind of go from there. Um, so space ranch, uh, is a very, uh, very, very cool one that I was going to talk about uh, a little bit more in depth. Um, so that is a concept that, um, we worked with creatives within Houston. Uh, and we said, Hey, if you had to design a theme park surrounding a hat, uh, mm-hmm. what would you do? Uh, and that's kind of like the challenge that we put out there or that the design team put out there, I should say. Uh, and some guys came back with some really cool concepts. They all named their hats, different rides. Um, Bo Bundy spoiler is one of them and it's, and his is fucking phenomenal. So, uh, Sheesh. so he crushed it. Um, so I'm really excited about that one, but yeah, Ben, I'll, I won't steal your thunder there. Go through the rest of them, but wanted to give you a little bit of insight behind space, uh, space ranch. No, I'm glad you took over on that because who knows when my internet was about to cut out. Like, <laughs> <this session. Yeah. laughs> um, Logan Herrera, it, it's a, it's a bummer. You're not going to be around for week one. Uh, but honestly, I'm not going to be around for week one. I'm not going out there till week two. So we'll definitely be able to get to see each other, brother. Hell yeah. Oh man. No, I'm I might, looking forward to this. I might need to pop out because that that slab pack sounds do pretty, it. Yeah, that that slab pack sounds pretty pretty tough. I feel like that's if they actually if Houston's bringing out actual slabs for that, like marketing yep. team needs to be like inspired on, on by video. some very specific slabs, actually, yep. which you might have seen in the previous image that Ben showed off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I might need to might need to pop out for one of those weekends in East Town. So, yeah, that's weekend one. So, Variety Spot Styles, the Space Ranch, the Slab Pack for Sunday to April 7th. Tenth, so, this is going to be an app exclusive. It's going to be the, uh, so, you know, Space Cowboy, basically. Uh, <laughs> those guys don't speak fluent Spanish like apparently I do. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, Friday, April 12th, we'll start up weekend number two. So, I'll be out there for that one. Uh, variety pack styles for the first pop-up event for that day. Saturday, April 13th is going to be the Mexican candy. And then some day, Sunday, April 14th is going to be slumping day. Mm. Oh yeah. Slump day. So yeah. Collaboration with slumped. If you're familiar with, uh, the good folks of Houston, uh, there. Um, yeah. Um, so really exciting stuff, uh, that you'll see popping up. So very similar to Phoenix mix of online and, in person, uh, just multiple weekends for, uh, uh, well, Phoenix is multiple weekends too. So, uh, multiple weekends, uh, <laughs> for Houston. Um, so, uh, have fun guys. I, I did not make the travel list again for Houston. I don't know what, uh, what hack club has against me going to Houston, but, uh, it, uh I didn't make the cut. Free Austin. Let him go to Texas. Hack yep. club. Jeez. I have a damn city named after me. Come on. Ow. Yeah, come on. <laughs> um, every day the event is going to be at 2315 Commerce Street in Houston, Texas. So that's like a couple blocks away from Minute Maid Park, but also mm-hmm. a couple blocks away from where we did uh, the Beer Pack event, Eighth Wonder. So looking forward to getting back out in that area. Um, my favorite bar in Houston is like a few blocks away from there. Oh, Sweet. very nice. Very nice. And Lord knows I'm probably going to end up there at least two nights. <laughs> uh, beer's, someone, beer's cheap out there, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah someone did ask me. about Agua Fresca and showing those off since uh, um, uh, it's going to drop like on Wednesday of next week, I believe. Um, so, Ben, do you have those? Uh, as far as who our guests are going to be for next week? No, no, no. The Agua Fresca hats. Did we, did we have those? I don't know if they're shot yet. No, I, I don't have any of the photos for any of the hats. Okay. Yeah. So we'll post them to Twitter though, as soon as we have them. Uh, so mm-hmm. that way you guys can get a look at those. Um, but I will say uh, in regard to next week, obviously I'm not going to be here. So Tafuri and Austin are going to be running the show, uh, but we are going to have special guests because going into the Houston events, I got to call them tomorrow and kind of confirm everything. Uh, but Space City and TX Fitteds uh, are going to be joining the show as our guests. Hell yeah. Yeah, part of the uh, Space Ranch. Woo! 
Yeah. So you'll get to learn some more about their inspiration and their thought process behind their designs, which I think is cool. Because, you know, we can't get in trouble. Oh, there goes Ben. We can't get in trouble for a hook <laughs> that's not working. So nope. <laughs> if we Absolutely. make up a made up theme park, we can't get in trouble for it. Um, Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Ben's audio at least. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okay. The elk dot, the cow print hat dropping from Freddy. So it's actually. It's more than a print. It's got like the uh, pony hair to it. So um, it is a wild, wild hat. Uh, so it is dropping soon, I believe. I think in it's some point in April. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah, I'll just say it's April. April. Next month. I just, yeah. yeah, I don't think. I'm not sure when. It's kind, and kind then, of late. And yeah. then, um, yeah, also, I mean, next month we got some heat dropping, man. Shouts out to Kobe, not Kobe, 24. I'm talking about the Mahal pack from yeah this i've i've seen i mean the braves in that pack looks immaculate but even that houston astros i was just like oh, oh that's, i'm saying lakeland tigers yeah the lakeland was that's actually be that's the first one lakeland tigers from ab i actually really like that because that's a callback to the wild valley pack so the first one yeah, yeah. Did. so i was like so I, I like his ab's getting some steam man he's he's been doing some really good work lately doing mm -hmm. very good work and Mr. Walker 54 pointing out the Phillies in that pack is nuts. See, I told you we got Phillies hats coming. Yep. Yep. I'm yep. not a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the force is strong with A B. So <laughs> May might bring something for him as well. Yeah. I mm -hmm. I haven't seen what they look like, but knowing the concept, and it's like I kind of can't wait. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Uh Elk Dot. Yes, you may. <laughs> So, um, figured end the show on a very important question for the both of you. Uh, yep. Sweet 16 kicking off tomorrow. Yes, sir. Um, and, of course, there's always the question that comes up every year, and that is, who are the greatest NCAA basketball champions for both men and women in NCAA history? That's kind of a double -speaking. open Open-ended question. Open-ended open question. Yeah. Question. Also, one of uh, my one of mine that made my top five is not a champion. <laughs> okay, actually, I know exactly who it is. Oh, you do? I do, because you said they're not a champion, and I feel like it's somebody you and I talked about recently. And it's like if they would have won the title, they hundred percent would have been on my list. Oh, okay, maybe. I'm curious, maybe. Um, so yeah, I I feel like we need to go around the room and give our top fives, men's and women's combined. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is good content right here. Yeah. Oh, it's I phenomenal agree. content. Who wants to who wants to start off? Uh should we just go? Uh should we each do our five and then go from there? Yeah, we can yeah. do it that way. Do our five, each go for for our four, you know. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Something okay. we typically yeah. don't do. Ben, who do you have in your, your five spot? So my number five spot, and this is this is a very low, in my opinion, number five, but it is the 2006 and 2007 Florida Gators mm. back -to -back national championships, uh, to which case Billy Donovan, head coach, yep. uh, Joaquin Noah, Coy Brewer, Al Horford, yep. Chris Richard, Torian Green, and Mo Spates, NBA talent on both of those squads. That's my number five. Yeah, that's okay. my number five also, too. Ironically enough, that is my number five. Yeah. Spoiler alert, they're on my list. They're not number five. Wow. Okay. My, my <laughs> number five, which I think I might get some heat behind this, and like people might disagree and not think that they're deserving of a top five, but is the uh, 08-09 uh, UNC Tar Heels. Uh, Ty Lawson, mm. Tyler, Tyler Hansborough, uh, Danny Green, Wayne Ellington. Like that was a solid ass team, and Tyler Hansborough yeah. was a dominant college player. I hate that team. I <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> no, and he, here's why. So much in your your circumstance where you were like top 500 in the country in your bracket, uh -huh. I was top 1,000 until that fucking game, and I had Michigan State winning it. Oh, and then put on an absolute barnstorm on the oh. Spartans. Yikes, mm. yikes. Yeah, and I, I don't have any I hate on my list. Andrew. I hate Duke, so uh I hate Duke, so I couldn't put any Duke yeah. on my list. I feel you. All right. Who y'all got in the number four spot? What you and I had the same number five? Yeah, me and you had the same number oh, five. Oh damn, okay. Yeah. 
Um, I'll, I'll say you go. You go with number. You start with number four then, since we had a tie. Yeah. So number four, I have the 2012 Kentucky team. So that Ooh. was Anthony Davis. Um, that was Michael K. Gilchrist. Really good squad. I was actually having this conversation with Austin before we started this, and I said, really, Kentucky has great recruiting. I feel like they've probably been the most one of the most overrated programs in the country, low, lowest the keys. I just feel like we've not they've not had a sweet 16 birth in a while. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, normally they get knocked out by like a Cinderella team or a team that nobody expects to do anything. I I guess I just I look at it like that. So I mean, but they're still a great team. That's that squad did great work. That's that's my number four, Kentucky. Ben. Um this is gonna this is gonna split the room completely. Okay. Uh, I am a massive Christian Leitner fan, and there was no better year in college basketball for Christian Leitner and the Duke Blow Devils than 1992, oh. baby. Um, in my opinion, the greatest championship that any Blue Devils team ever attained, with the exception of one, because when they when they took down UNLV, an undefeated UNLV team, most would say that was the best. But no, 92, specifically because the final four game between Duke and Kentucky just sealed him as a living legend. <laughs> I hate Duke, so like I, I purposely did not include that team on my list. I figured, I figured that was going to be great. I think that I think they're rightfully on your list. I just fucking hate Duke. So with Taft's Taft's <laughs> comparison of most overrated programs, I think Duke uh, has a fitting spot on that list. Um, so just as just in general, like they've made so many tournament bids when they were yeah. an absolutely mediocre team, it just pisses me off so much. All just because it's Duke. Um, yeah, so like no one else makes tournaments just because they're a school like like Duke does. Um, yeah, it's like Duke is Duke is the men's basketball what Alabama was pre the college yeah on right. playoff. Yeah, I mean, totally agree with that. Yeah. Um. So my number four, but Tef, did you give your number four? Yeah, my number four was uh, 2012 Kentucky. Oh, okay. My number four is the team that did not win a championship, and mm. that is. 2008 Davidson, the birth of Steph Curry, which I respect. That was, that was not the route I thought you were going to go. Elite eight, that. elite eight that I don't remember a more electric time in college basketball for March Madness. I think that was probably my most like one of my most favorite March Madness uh, tournaments because I don't remember an entire country. We used to be a proper country. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, <laughs> that was the moment when everybody was rallying behind Steph Curry, knocking off who, who was it that they beat Georgetown at the, yeah, they beat, they they beat go to the elite eight. That yeah. was like, he was absolutely electric. He's now one of the best basketball players of all time. And it's solely because of that tournament. In my opinion, I don't think Steph Curry's stock is looking as good when you, uh, when you, if you don't have that tournament. I was dead certain when you said a team that win the championship, you're going to go with the 1991 UNLV running rebels, which I would have totally agreed with you. With. <laughs> Cause that team was stacked. They I was did. not expecting fucking 08 Davidson. <laughs> yeah. I would put them top 10 though. I'd put the UNLV team 91 UNLV yeah. in top 10 for sure. I just, yeah. I just, I understand the reasoning for the pick. It was just when you said champions, I was just like, okay, so they had to have won it all. Because I feel like that's kind of like the definition of tournament champion is that's the best college basketball team of that year. So, but I mean, to that end, I do understand your reasoning though, and I can't. Mr. I can't Walker's not, not happy with our list. No, <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to go through a lot of the comments after we run through our top five because I'm I'm seeing some really good additions that I agree with a lot. But yeah, we had to whittle it to five. It's yeah. tough. Um, Austin, you start with the number three now. Number three, you've already mentioned them. So like that, remember when I said before the show, I feel like my three and my five are interchangeable. Um, so 2007, 2008, Florida Gators. Gators. Um, I would interchange them with the 08, 09 UNC Tar Heels uh, in that three to five spot. So um, like fair. you said, just a completely stacked team. Um, yeah, that's a, they're in my three spot. I won't reiterate everything that you already said behind them. Mm -hmm. What you got to furry? Number three, ironically enough, Big Show was reading my mind. I had 2016 Villanova as my number three. If you look at 
specifically, and again, you just look at the, the tournament that they had to go through to get to the title. And also on top of that, at that time, people were betting against them. I think they bet that UNC was going to beat them. And Villanova ended up coming out and smoking them. Like, I mean, we're not, they didn't smoke them, but it was definitely, I think it was a last, last second shot, but yeah, they, they didn't break away. There wasn't large separation at national championship game. I remember I watched, I was like, wow, this is actually one of the better men's like national championship games I've seen in a long time. I am a, I am a massive and I can't even emphasize massive Villanova fan. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have any Villanova team on my list, which I feel really guilty and terrible about. But that yeah. 2016 team, and especially the back-to-back -back should have been buzzer beaters for both UNC and Villanova, incredible. I put it up there with G. Laurent's comment about the 2010 Butler-Duke game being probably one yep. of the most electric college basketball games I've ever seen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you got it. I, that was the only reason why I felt like they got to be top three. Are, are we different. forgetting about uh, Syracuse six overtime game? Oh, no, I'm oh, not. That, I'm talking about for a national was... championship. Sorry. But, no, the Syracuse <laughs> game six overtime is still one of the greatest games I've ever witnessed. Yeah. Right. That, that was, <laughs> yeah. And that game was ended on a Kemba Walker step back, which, which, again, to that, to this day, nastiest game winner I think I've – Yeah. well, no, nah, Kyrie's is the nastiest game winner I think I've ever seen in my lifetime. <laughs> Fading, going to, the, going to your non-dominant hand over a seven-footer. Um, All right, let's let's camp. relax. Let's not forget about Devendorf step back three for the fourth overtime. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, come on. So, uh, my Did number you know, three, Joe? my number three, old school pick, nineteen seventy six Indiana Hoosiers, the last men's undefeated team to win the national championship. Um, there were some NBA players, but no real superstars because obviously Isaiah Thomas wasn't on the team until the 81 team won the national championship, but undefeated. You can't, you can't deny the greatness of that squad and the fact that it was the last team to do it. So agreed. Hell yeah. I, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't going that far in the time machine, but I mean, for that, for the reason that you stated, I, I feel like I can understand why you <laughs> the third. Uh, number two spots. Uh, I'm going with another undefeated team. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going with the 09-10 women's yep. UConn Huskies team. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, Maya Moore, Moore uh, put a lot of respect on that woman's name because uh, I don't think there's been a domination within college basketball of that, of that gratitude. Um so yeah, that's my two spot. I don't think like I don't think it's talked about n enough, like the way that uh, that men's r recent hoop titles are talked about. Um, no. You know, and I think it's it's forgotten about, and I think it's uh, a shame. It shouldn't be lost history. Uh, I uh, I actually have the exact same teams teams plural as uh, my number two spot as well. Yeah, back to back undefeated seasons. Uh, Gina Ariyama, arguably one of the top three greatest women's coasters of all time. Uh, but aside from Maya Moore, Renee Montgomery, Tina Charles, uh, Kaplan Green, and Tiffany Hayes, incredible yeah. squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we all had the same number two. I, I feel like you can't. Maya Moore is arguably the greatest women's basketball player of all time. I mean, pretty much at the peak of her career, decided she was going to peace out and do social activism work because. In my mind, she was just tired of winning. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, well, no, no, let me not be disrespectful. She's, Mr. I'm sure that Mr. she's Walker. very. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say she's no, definitely extremely, you know, I'm sure extremely considerate about, you know, social, you know, justice issues and affairs. But I feel like she was a perennial winner. I mean, you can't you can't talk about those UConn teams and my Moore's name not be mentioned. Yeah, you just can't do it. And that's what I was. That's what I was just going to say to Mr. Walker comment, uh, because I am a Brianna Stewart fan. She's a Syracuse native uh, like myself. So uh, I'm very much a fan of her and she did win four chips, but uh, I don't think you can talk about her without talking about Maya Moore first. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's no shade. It's like, I mean, I feel like if you, if you had a choice to get either Brianna Stewart or Maya Moore in their, you know, primes, I think you're, you're not doing bad if you get either of those people. But yeah. Personally, I, I just loved Maya Moore's game a little bit more personally. Mm -hmm. she's the real deal mm -hmm. <laughs> uh who's who's your number two tef yo yeah my, we, we all have the two. same number two spot. We, oh unanimous uh, number two with the unanimous number two. Women? yeah Damn, number that's incredible two. yeah i don't uh, think our number one is unanimous though 
Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Space Hippie nailed it. I know a lot of people thought I was going to go Oregon Ducks in some capacity, but I'm not. Even though the 1939 Oregon Ducks is the first ever national basketball champions. Uh, the 1971-72 slash 72-73 UCLA Bruins. Back-to-back -back undefeated seasons uh, led by, uh, of course, the great Coach Wooden and Bill Walton uh at the uh at the post man um and granted that that ucla squad won what was it i think nine championships in a row but the fact that those two years were the only times they went back to back undefeated seasons like even the years with lou al cinder aka kareem abdul jabbar never had an undefeated season mm -hmm. uh only under bill walton so that's why that's my number one 71 through 73 tough so, in a rare time, me and Austin are actually going to be on the same page. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, my number one has to be the 03, 04 Syracuse squad. Um, the reason why I say that is because, you know, Carmelo was, I think, the last college player, I think, that um, won both was a national champion and was a national player of the year. And it wasn't like he was just a footnote on the team. He was arguably the main feature on that squad. Um, sensational player throughout college came into came into the NBA, you know, rookie of the year conversation. You know, obviously we see what you know the body of his career was. Wish he would have won a title while he was you know, still an active player. But I mean, just that run that Syracuse had, you know, during that tournament, you you can't really deny it. And again, I know a lot of people will, will look at undefeated records and stuff like that, but when you look at a marquee player. That's like pretty much leading his his team to the chip. In in recent memory, I feel like that's probably one of those guys that was captain on that squad in college and then moved into the league as being a superstar. So that's why I had I got Syracuse as my number one. Oh yeah. Right. Hands down my number one. I'm being a total <laughs> homer. Oh two oh three. Yeah, go oh, right. Yeah, right. Oh two oh three, Syracuse Orange. Not only do you have Mello, you have the infamous block by Hakeem Warwick. Yep. Like that was one of the most electric basketball moments I can ever remember. Uh, and not only that, it was also during a massive snowstorm in Syracuse. So I had to go to neighbor's house to watch the game because my house didn't have power and they had a generator. So we were able to watch the game there. So it was, yeah, like the, my hometown was buried under a, a shit ton of snow and we're all having mm -hmm. to watch the national championship game uh, if you're lucky enough to have a generator at that time. So um, absolutely, uh, like you had Hakeem Warwick, you had Jerry McNamara, you had uh, Carmelo Anthony, you had uh, Quet Dwayne. I don't know if everybody remembers Quet Dwayne, but like the man was – he was just massive and like weighed 110 pounds. So, so he was, he was like <laughs> six, nine, 110 pounds soaking wet. So absolute legend. Uh, and then, you know, Bayheim, Bayheim yeah. being Bayheim. So, yeah. yeah. Big show. I, you know, what's funny. It's funny. Like, I feel like me and big show were kind of thinking the same way when I was making my list, because I was really going back and forth between Maryland and Syracuse, both ACC schools. So I was just like, mm, but to to that end, I just think it was. I mean, you you see, True Game said it best. I mean, you have you have arguably the greatest college freshman of all time, and Carmelo Anthony on a team that wins a national championship. I mean, mm -hmm. yep. And uh, and we we're even getting the Jordan shrug from Ben right now in a frozen moment. How more perfect could that be? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I. I love that Syracuse squad. So I totally get where you guys are coming from on that. Um, also agree with the 01 Maryland squad. Uh, my honorable mention that I, I end up having to knock down to number six was the 1955, 56 San Francisco Dons led by uh, the legendary Bill Russell. Uh, that was the first mm -hmm. ever back-to-back -back champions in college. And um, I mean, I, it's a different game. I know. But uh, you can't you can't deny the greatness. I mean, I think the game has completely changed even from the Syracuse National Championship era when they were Big East. And I like, yeah, I, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, oh one. Yeah, when we say yeah, V V T Kevin, when we say like oh one, I mean yeah, it would be oh one oh two. You know that like if we, <laughs> yeah, we we're not like normally like like I said, the basketball season normally starts you know 
the year before and then the champions crown the next year after. But old, old school Big East basketball was my absolute favorite. And I still haven't like, I still f- feel like it's been the same since Syracuse joined the ACC. Yeah. Now they have a rivalry with Duke, whatever. Uh, like I just love like classic, like, UConn Georgetown matchups like the big I miss the B- yeah. Big East immensely from like yeah where same. Be. so yeah so and I and I guess for you guys making your list and I'm sure because chat's throwing out things like hey this team had you know draft picks this team you know did this or did that like because I feel like to a certain extent there's like there's certain teams that will that will see and will say okay yeah you were a champion but it was like like to me like that 2016 Villanova team you know, that was a team to me, like when you looked at them and you looked at like the nature of the game that they played and then all the way up to the national championship, it's like that to me is a reason they deserve to be in that top five conversation. So when you guys were going through your list, like was it solely team success? Was it personnel on that team and who got drafted? Did any of that kind of play into your 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 thought process or choices? I mean, it for the most part, it did for me just because of the fact that the caliber of players that those teams had and especially whatever their record was. And that's why I definitely lean more on teams that won back-to-back championships. Cause I mean, trying to repeat as a champion in any collegiate sport is like damn near impossible. Like, I don't know how, like I know Alabama has done it a number of times for football, but at the same time, Nick Saban recruited the hell out of those teams and made it happen. Trying to do that in basketball with so many teams in the field and any, (laughs) <laughs> uh, Ben's takes and so that's why like for me with <laughs> I was on such a good roll on that and then it just yeah. cut yeah you were spitting yeah. you were spitting <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, it did play a factor into that for me yeah Shit! yeah what about oh. for you Austin and anything at all or you just you were just purely picking you know, just teams off of just personal recollection, like what you remember. Yeah, it was mostly personal recollection. Like, uh, like I did want to put the uh, 92 uh, Blue Devils in there. Um, like, uh, I, I re- like they do deserve it, in my opinion. Um, as much as I hate Duke, uh, like, I, they probably still do. Like, it's warranted, Ben's list. Um, but, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, for me – it was more about like personal recognition recognition and like um uh like March Madness. I prefer college basketball over professional basketball any day of the week. And like March Madness is like my favorite time period. So um yeah, yeah so I think like it, this one I think was a it was just cool to like reminisce on some of those things too. Yeah, so. I feel like that's a thing that like that's the one thing that everybody loves about the tournament. It's like I mean, we just had Oakland you know, university this year, you know, doing what they did. Right. You know, it's like, there's like, there's, I feel like every team now is thinking, you know, like, man, we have a chance to be like the next Davidson or we have a chance to knock off FGCU a few years ago. (laughs) Like, like it's like March madness. There's nothing like it. So, yeah. As like, and you see true game. I see. That's the thing too. It's like, there's so many teams that have potential. Like somebody had talked about the Kentucky team that had John Wall and DeMarcus cousins over, I think the Kentucky squad I had on my list. And it was like, but see, the thing is, is like w- the potential that your team has based off of the talent to me didn't play into whether you got in or not, because it's like at the end of the day, the biggest litmus test is did you win at all? Because to me, it could kind of actually work against you if yep. you had a stacked team and you couldn't even get out the Sweet 16 or even get to an Elite Eight. You know, I was like, so it's like so stuff like that to me, it's kind of like a double edged sword. I think it's kind of like the same. I feel like that's people's gripes with lebron you know it's kind of like well if you had a good good enough team or you had a good enough squad and you didn't win is making it there would it have been better that you didn't make it there at all versus Mm -hmm. you know you know winning at all argument yeah yeah i mean i personally i look at it like this you play to win so if you can get to the national championship every year whether you win or lose the fact that you're there consistently every year is is a testament to your greatness as it is so you know so i mean but at the end of the day it's you still got to get the job done. So still, still got to, as Kobe would say, RIP. You know, job not finished until you yeah. until you hosting that title, until you hosting that trophy. That's it. Speaking <laughs> of job not finished, how's everybody's brackets looking? Uh, mine's actually shot. still decent. No, mine's mine decent not. still as well. So mm-hmm. I'm in the ninety seven point fifth percentile. So uh, I'm in six in the Hat Club bracket, and then in my paid one, I'm in fourth. 
Hey oh. Yeah, it's mine is. Job. Yeah, me and Mr. Walker in the same boat. Mine's cooked. <laughs> Mine's cooked. I don't. I don't think I. I think by the time we got to the Sweet Sixteen, it was just like, yeah. This, I Ooh. just went in and just. I was rolling. Away. I was rolling up until Auburn. So uh, there was yeah, up and until that, the and, Auburn and game. I was Yale, man. Yeah, I was yeah. four hundred something, and, and in the nation, which was wild. Uh, yeah, and Auburn just like punctured the air out of the tires. Yeah, no, like I said, I don't. I I think yeah, Auburn was the one I think that sunk most most people's brackets. They definitely sunk mine. Yeah, Auburn. I had Auburn in the final four. So that really uh that really Wild. put a damper on my bracket. Yeah. Everything else has been fine. Kansas uh is probably my next biggest one that like uh, I had Kansas going to the Elite Eight. So I could wow. potentially get six of the elite elite eight still. Mm-hmm. Um so but Kansas was kind of a, a like it was a it was a tough one. Like uh Kansas Gonzaga was a tough one, you know, like it was yeah. a toss up there. So, and whoever won that matchup, I was going to have them going to the lead eight. So if Gonzaga, like if I picked Gonzaga, I was going to have them going to the lead eight, but. Um, so who do you yeah. got? Um, so who do you got on the women, on the women's side? Or did you, did you do a women's bracket at all? Or I didn't do a women's bracket this year. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm pe- people are going to hate me for this, but I am not a, I'm not a Caitlin Clark fan. So. I mean, I've I've heard like I think like people watching her play now, like I've heard people call her a little bit whiny, you know, yeah. or like complaining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, but like I said, I mean, she's a walking bucket. You say what you want about her, she's a walking bucket. I you got to respect the game. The, I feel the thing that have- pisses me off. Uh, I even have a I even have a, a t shirt of this woman too. So Kelsey Plum. Yeah. I do not think it's the recognition recognition that she deserved during her college career. She's the mm-hmm. one who set the point uh, record and yeah. got like zero credit through it for like the most thing she was famous for was throwing a t-shirt into the second balcony of a, yeah. of a stadium. Yeah. Like, that, like I think she got snubbed so hard on that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just not a Caitlin Clark guy. So yeah. Oh yeah. I did see that Oak dot. They said she got a $5 million um, dollar offer um, from the big, from the big three to go play. I was like, nah, I wouldn't. Who did? Who did? Caitlin Clark? Caitlin Clark, Clark, yeah. Tom? Caitlin Clark, yeah. From the from the big three, she got an offer. I, t- I, I talked about it on Bench Warmers this morning. So the most detrimental. The most detrimental. Yep. Take that deal. The Indiana fee returned all those season two packages that so many people bought because Clark is supposed to be the number one overall pick. Who has a who has a number one overall pick, Ben? In Indiana Fever. Oh, you're probably wanting that, huh? <laughs> uh I mean, I'm not against it. <laughs> he be says she looks like Mel Gibson. I mean, I'm a I'm a bigger Sabrina fan, so it's just like uh, no, nah, I think I mean I, yeah, like, I like Sabrina like, more. Yeah, yeah, like I like Sabrina more personally. I mean, also from like I know that she still has some development to do. Juju out at USC, I think is gonna be a really good player. She probably needs like another year, I think, or so of development. Oh, yeah. It's like, but I think like she's definitely for some reason she's giving me like I'm trying to think of a real apt comparison. Like my Clark? No, um Juju out in USC. Oh. I was trying to think of who's who her game really reminds me of. Um yeah, I'm gonna lean on you on this one, Ben. Cause I I don't know, like I I feel like I mean I feel like she definitely, you know what you see. Ah, true, that's, I like that comparison. That's acceptable because she's had thirty point games. She has yeah. like she'll have games where she'll she'll really like turn it on, and then there are other games where I can see that she's kind of like, I think that she's still working on trying to find when is it that moment to assert herself like offensively during games. But I feel like she definitely has like big game potential. Like I could see her going in like a WNBA playoff series and having two or three thirty point games easily. Just I was gonna I would compare it to, to maybe Damian Lillard. That's also not a bad comparison. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, the only the only difference is, you know, because Dame did everything at a small school in Utah, yeah. whereas she's on a much bigger stage. So, yeah, it, style of game, yeah, yeah. I feel like she's definitely like a she's definitely a scoring threat. She she definitely can do she can. There's not a lot offensively I see that she can't do. 
Um, and for some people say play no defense, Melo. I mean, that's the one thing I that's the one thing I will say. I don't know if y'all watch that. That's Iowa the entire team. NBA, though. That's yeah. that's not that's not Melo. If, if, if y'all watch the women's bracket and y'all saw that Iowa State Stanford game, like not gonna lie, I was like, I was looking at that game. I was like, those girls are actually really tenacious, getting after it on defense. Like, I feel like if this was an actual NBA or actual NBA game, like I would, I don't think we would see any defense. Lady athletes are mean, and I mean that in like the <laughs> most respectful way possible. Like, it, it's I'm frightened. Like, it's I so I don't want to go into that. Received many a swirly from lady athletes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I feel like the intensity. I feel like the intensity is there. Like, I mean, when you see, like, I mean, when you see the LSU South Carolina game, and you see like these girls barking at each other, and it's like it's not just you know freely. It's like they actually really are bucking on each other. It's just like. It's entertaining to watch, not just in the perspective of, you know, it's competitiveness. And I think that's a big thing that a lot of people say about the women's game. It's not competitive. They're not, you know, they're not really playing stuff like, you know, I I feel like, again, man, you're, these are professional athletes or, you know, or at least, you know, amateur athletes becoming, you know, professional athletes for those that are, you know, not NIL signed. So it's like, I got to put respect on them, man. Like, I feel like if you saw Maya Moore in a pro AM playing against men, she's still giving men buckets. Like y'all, yeah. y'all gotta y'all gotta stop acting like these are still you know Asia. If Asia Wilson comes onto your court, she could drop twenty easily. You know if you if you not even if you played you know college D two D one. You see true game fifteen. Where'd you play college ball? Mm, I yeah I missed that comment completely. Yeah, because his comment is I played Dame in college. We won by twenty. By 20 plus, but he but Dame had 26 points, but he was a freshman. I'm I'm curious where, where you play college ball at UC. Yeah. So what would that be? Like uh, who, would, who would Dame have gone up against? That's UC. I'm assuming that's what UC is Cincinnati. For. He said Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Okay. There we go. <laughs> damn, bro. Facts, Logan. Facts. I'm I'm glad. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we under we on I mean that's a big that's a big deal right there. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a huge deal. That's dope. Yeah. What year? Uh, so this would have been. Oh, <laughs> Elta. Elta says I played point guard on SUNY Geneseo's in a mural squad. <laughs> so Elta, I played uh I played shooting guard on SUNY Geneseo's <laughs> <laughs> or SUNY uh Cortland's in a mural squad. One of them, NIT, yeah. Okay, so NIT game my junior year. Okay, oh, yeah, that's funny. That's dope. Oh, that had been like 2015. No, earlier, earlier, than, no, earlier than that. Yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah he's, 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 I was thinking it was like 08 or 09. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, <laughs> yeah, but no, that's. Jesus, we make a nasty back. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta see a backcourt of Austin and Elk Dot in action. <laughs> I gotta see that. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yeah, man. No, it was actually it was a funny thing was uh, a lot of the Syracuse players would because my campus was only 30 minutes from Syracuse. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of the players would come and play pickup ball at Cortland uh, mm-hmm. okay. and, and they would just do it literally just to like dunk on everybody. So there was a couple of games that I played uh, um, like I played against Brandon Trish one game um I'm blanking on the other kid's name um but like i just got demolished like i was like it was it was it wasn't even fun it was like a cool experience but it was like it was not even fun so yeah. uh you see true game we got we gotta like talk about this more in depth in like another show or yeah we definitely gotta because i, I, think just, I just be- went back and looked at that time frame that you were at cincinnati one i completely forgot about mick cronin being the coach there but then the the reality is that you played during a couple of like actual ncaa tournaments so definitely want some backstory there that's dope yeah it's, it's phenomenal yeah I feel like you gotta. I feel like you gotta bring him on um, bench warmers, Ben. Like I feel like you that that would be a perfect perfect guest spot for him. Yes. <laughs> oh, Scoop Jardine. How did oh, I forget God. about Scoop Jardine? Yeah. So Scoop Jardine and Brandon Trish would come on occasion to play pickup ball at at uh in West Johnson too. Would at Cortland. It was pretty cool. Um, but they would just destroy everybody. It was. 
because it was D three versus D one people. <laughs> so, <laughs> like there was no shot. There was no Tales shot. From, Tales from the Cuse. The scoop is oh, from Philly. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh man. Holy smokes. UC True Game says, I competed in college slam dunk contest my senior year against Jacob Tucker, who won it. Y'all might remember him. LOL was the first Matt McClung. I definitely mm -hmm. remember that. I do remember that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh shit. So you're a dunker too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now you you definitely have That's to have a YouTube one. video <laughs> in chat. <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah. You definitely got to have him on bench warmers now, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. We'll 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 figure that out. <laughs> we'll figure that out. I would say, yeah, especially closer to like the national championship, because I definitely want your insight on this. So facts, yeah. <laughs> Dude's about to snag some in. Just casually throws on became a Harlem Globe Charter. What the fuck? Wait, who's a Harlem? Oh, who's the true game? oh the true game, nice, yeah. man. That's awesome. Just trying to rack the my team brain. that the Globe Trotter always play against. What was that? Uh, what's oh, the, the team Washington Generals? Yeah. The what is it? The Washington, Washington Generals. Generals. Washington Generals. Yeah. Yeah, I went yeah. to a couple of the time. I went to the uh, what well, used to be back then the Phillips Arena when they um when the Globe Trotters came through Atlanta, went a couple of times when I was younger. Oh yeah, the Globe Trotter games when you're a kid is awesome, and uh, <laughs> I saw <laughs> now. <laughs> You see, True Game said, "If I told Tef my real name, he would know actually who I." Mm. Whoa! All right. Okay. Oh, based yeah. on that, is Rafa take a stab on who this is? Well, Go ahead. His, yeah. I'm assuming his number was 15. So I'm not even looking at that. I'm just, I'm just doing it based on deductive reasoning. Somebody from possibly from Georgia, Cashmere, yep. right? Yep. <laughs> wow! Very nice. Welcome yep. to chat. Glad to have you in. Yeah, man. Like I said, it was. It's like, world is small. World is very small. I was wondering. Like, I was just like, man, he's like, he's like real, like interactive tonight. And he's like, yeah. If I said my name, Teff will know who I am. Like, <laughs> all right, all right. I know what's going on. Hell he yeah. said not. Nah, he said not. Nah, Cashmere was my PG. What? No, I didn't hear the name that you said, Ben. So if I said yes prematurely, that's on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I thought you, you thought you were agreeing to that. No, yeah, no. That's I. I definitely feel like we gotta. We definitely gotta bring them on. I feel like that's. That I think that would be a real good sports combo to have. Just like about like. Ben will get a champion jersey made after you. Yeah, like so, like so, Will, so. Um. So yeah. So D Wilkes fifteen. He follows. Yeah, he does follow me on IG. I went wrong direction. I went geographically with that. So it's like, it's like well, Kashmir's from Georgia because you're from Savannah. So it's just like, yeah, it's probably the connection there. It's Hell crazy. Yeah. No, we've actually, we've actually had him on, um, we've had him on Fit Talk Fridays a few times. He's like showing oh, off my new pickups and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh, What's up, yeah. Good. I like, I, I, I was sure he tapped into these, but I didn't know, like, I didn't know what his uh, Twitch name was because my, I'm like my, Screen name on here is the same thing as it is on all my social media channels. So, no, shout out to D Wilkes, man, for pulling up. Appreciate you, no, my it's guy. Like going through the roster and then like jerseys and stuff like that, and now uh, looking at the username, it's just like, wow, I feel like an idiot for just not knowing this. I do, <laughs> I do want to still see the dunk video. Though. Like, I'm, I'm being serious. Drop the YouTube videos in chat. So, yeah. I want to see those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, nah, but it, yeah, chat, definitely, definitely check him out. D Wilkes 15. He's good people. He, he knows hats. And apparently now is I'm learning I'm learning more about him in this live than I think I knew before. So I, I gotta I gotta do my gotta do my research. So Darnell, are you still a globe trotter or no? We'll have to wait on a uh, response for that. Oh, because I want to see some ball tricks too. <laughs> I want to be amazed. Ah, done globe trotting. <laughs> I'm done. I'm I'm say, still break out the trampoline. <laughs> Austin was ready to ask for that. Yeah. Later, Davey. See you, Davey. <laughs> Everybody say pause. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. <Yeah. laughs> 
Yeah. But no, man, no, that's that's cool, man. That's why I like I like these <laughs> I like these like lives and I mean and I like these streams because we get to um man like I get to, we get to like learn more about chat, we get to learn more about you guys and what y'all are into outside of hats. Like, I mean, I learned that like Ben was like a, a top 10 ranked Nintendo player in the world, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> arcade like, cabinet Ben. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, I was gonna say I at one point I was good at video games, not not anything beyond 2013 though. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you guys have uh, <laughs> I've been following the Diddy scenario, but uh, it is absolutely wild, uh, especially with his like fleeing the like, I don't know. Did he flee the country? Did he not like a, his jet did? <laughs> so, so like it's crazy. Yeah, I, I just I look at it as a consistent reminder, man, of like no matter how much money you make, no matter what you do, it's everything comes to light at some point. Uh, yeah, he I says that Jay Z's next. I don't know if it's Jay Z, but I think it's Meek Mill is next. <laughs> so <laughs> I think Meek Mill is next. Yeah, yeah. This is why I I never want any bit of fame. Like <laughs> I, I prefer being like I have no problem being known. Ben, ben, ben do you have a past that <laughs> you're hiding? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm I just like it, it's just better to be known than to be famous. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I feel like being sometimes those two two things are synonymous, but I think it just kind of depends on what you're what you're what like in what industry or like niche you're in. Like I feel like yeah. if you're like if you're in like the fashion space and you're known, then I feel like that's cool. But I feel like when you start reaching like that pop star celebrity status and like your whole life is in fail. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> Your whole <laughs> life is basically in the public eye and like you're tried in the court of public opinion every day. Like that to me would just get tiring and exhausting, even though I don't really do anything, you know, like to where like I feel like people would do that. It's just like that's that's the funny thing is like when you don't think you're doing anything, everyone has an opinion about what you're doing. Yes. Yeah, you you see, exactly. drop the link, man. Definitely want to see that. Do it. <laughs> um yeah, it's yeah, I don't know. I think uh I think Diddy's I think Diddy might be like the the next Epstein, unfortunately. So it's, I always say, wait until the, the nails in the coffin, but it's like, I, I definitely can say indications don't look good. Yeah. It's not looking good. No, right. I mean the, the whole fleeing immediately thing is just bizarre. Yeah. I, it's not I'm, a good look. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, look. there's some things it's, it's optics and that's where you, you hire a very good publicist and, PR person to let you know, hey, that yeah. thing you just did, don't do that. <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, what uh, I saw the oh, other day though, um, Ben, former former guest uh, Austin Mills, yeah. uh, was playing uh, was playing golf yesterday with uh, Travis Kelsey. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're boys, evidently. Like wow. I've seen them like party together a couple times and. So we got to get ba him back on here and, and uh, spill some tea on some. <laughs> <laughs> on some tea. That's exactly Swift. what I want to bring up. From Taylor Swift knowledge. Um, he's He was unable to, to drop the link in the chat. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, damn. Damn. Tweet it at us and we'll retweet it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Um, We've got over the two hour mark. I feel like we should yeah. wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, let's wrap it up, folks. Let's wrap we it did, up. Yeah, we did. We did conspiracy theories. Talked about college basketball, sprinkled a little bit of Diddy talk in there. I feel like we we, 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 <laughs> we, hit we went across culture. the gambit. We hit Wait sports, we hit fashion, we're good. Let's Czar okay. Danger just coming in with my uncle played in the 93 Final Four. Like, come on, bro. You can't do this like yeah. 20 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, when we we're have gonna, we're gonna have to pick on. that one back up. Yeah, yeah when we, we have, have UC on, we'll uh we'll bring up that uh that one Zard. So definitely, right definitely. On. Um, guys, as always, absolute pleasure. Always a lot of fun. Uh, remember, give us a follow, give us a subscribe, hit a like, uh, because we're on YouTube now as well. Uh, if you ever miss the show live, you can always catch us there. And uh, on top of the other content that we release there outside of bench warmers, recap and flip the script. Uh, to yep. which case, flip the script. We're gonna do on Friday since we missed it yesterday, since my ass was out of town. <laughs> Copy. Yeah. Yep. So we I'll take my, I'll take, I'll take my weekly beating like a man. <laughs>
yeah, I bet, we'll see about that, Ben. But uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we still have to do the vote for what we're playing too. So don't forget to vote uh, for if we're playing 2K or if we're playing uh, uh, NHL. NHL is a lot of fun. So NHL is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and I still need to put on. I still need to put FIFA on the the old Y box 542. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, chat. Well, thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for uh, running through conspiracy theories. Thanks for talking fashion with us. Uh, thanks for talking sports with us. We'll see you guys next week. Besides, see you guys. Guys. latest.